So, it's done. The AWS Summit in San Francisco is over and it's time for me to go home. It's been one fun week. I've actually driven down with my wife from Seattle to San Francisco. So around 800 miles on the beautiful coasts of Washington, Oregon, and California. So I'm pretty happy about that. But the thing I'm most happy for is, well, first of all, seeing San Francisco. I think this is my second time in San Francisco. First time I actually can spend some time in that wonderful city. But also, after this long period of doing everything virtual, I finally managed to meet people in person. Apparently people exist from the waist down. So what was wonderful about the summit? Well, there's a bunch of things, but for me personally, I had a chance to talk to the AWS community. So I've spoken to a bunch of AWS community members such as Christy, JR, Justin, Chris, David, and a whole lot of folks out there. I've had some interviews with them, which was pretty fun. Um, we talked about, well, in general, what they're doing, what they're building, how they started. They gave us some tips. Uh, we talked about um, CDK, we talked about ETLs, we talked about sustainability, all of those fun things. And those interviews are actually gonna be released sometime soon. Um, they actually delivered talks during that entire event. They had like, we had the Dev Lounge in, in the San Francisco Summit, so they, they delivered talks around CDK, sustainability. Um, there was this wonderful talk on how you can render Blender projects in a Lambda function. I love that. So those things were really good, cool to look at, um, which is just great. The, the, the summit itself was really nice. Um, there was a bunch of people out there. You know, I, got, I finally got to meet a lot of colleagues, a lot of friends, a lot of people from the community in person again. Um, there were some cool launches. We had a great, great keynote by Swami. Um, I think some things that stuck out are, are like, uh, I believe, Glue interactive sessions. But we have two big serverless things come up. Finally, after a long time, I do believe it's been like two years or so, or even more. Well, serverless Aurora version two is finally out. It is finally generally available and you can check it out. Now, what's up with version two? Well, the thing with version two is that it's much faster, right? So Aurora as our database engine is basically separating compute from storage, which is fun. But with this thing, you can actually, um, it's serverless and the version two is much faster. So the scale ups and the scale downs go really, well, really in step with your application utilization, which is pretty good. So um, yeah, I guess that's the thing to check out. The other serverless thing that kind of uh, came out is something to do with machine learning and SageMaker. So in essence, what we have right now is SageMaker serverless inference. So if you have an inference thing, something that will serve customers with your trained model, well, do inference, right? Um, and you don't really wanna um, do it all the time, right? You wanna save up money and have this real on-demand thing. Well, SageMaker serverless inference is the thing for you. So that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, what else happened during the summit? Yes. For the first time since it exists, I had a chance to check out serverless espresso. If you have not had a chance to do it, uh, I mean, it's just an espresso thing, but uh, the whole story about serverless espresso is like, it's wonderful. I'm sure some other people can give, give it more justice, but the entire ordering and, 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 you know, ordering and the system behind how you can get the serverless coffee, not serverless coffee, espresso coffee is done through serverless. So there's a bunch of step functions, lambda functions, not, not step functions, bunch of, bunch, yeah, step functions. Step functions, lambda functions, all of those things are available there. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, it, it's quite a cool explanation. Um, if, if you ever had a chance to go there, go and ask how it's done. Um, the, fun, the fun thing about that is that they limit, I believe 10 espressos or 10 coffees per 10 minutes or there's a certain time frame that can only serve X amount of coffees because this is the amount of coffees the folks on the coffee machine can actually produce. So if you spend those coffees or if you order 10 coffees within that time frame, you have to wait again until you can order. And it's all done in the back end. It generates a specific URL and key. Wonderful. Um, 
the good old deep racer was there which is pretty cool uh there's been a deep racer league there a bunch of people uh were racing you know the little fun fun cars pretty pretty nice um what else uh yeah I, this is kind of a personal thing i stayed in a hotel and we had a vice president in the same hotel which is a which is pretty fun and also very interesting because at, at one point i couldn't come back to my hotel well yeah this this has been the first summit for me in person in the last well two years and this has been the first summit for me this year hopefully i go to more um we actually next week the 27th of april um uh, in london we have our big summit so if you are in london if you're in the uk if you're in the region go and check it out if you're not there some portions of the summit some some very interesting things like interviews with the community discussions with some of the speakers are actually going to be live streamed on twitch.tv slash aws so make sure to check that as well out well um cool i have around 900 miles left to drive home so um it's been a fun fun trip i hope you if you were at the summit i hope you enjoyed it if you have not been in the summit i hope this video has been informational informational yeah it's been useful to you and uh hopefully i'll see you at some next event bye